This is Amit Harani. I'm a sales engineer here at Pentaho. So to, for this exercise, we will go through uh, steps on how to create cubes using a Pentaho schema workbench tool. So I'm sure it's familiar to you. This is Pentaho Analyzer. This is uh, Pentaho's web-based uh, query and analysis tool. So for an user or a business user, you can drag and drop and you can create a web-based report here. So the question often gets asked here. So what is the process to create this uh, uh, engine that is available on the right side? This is nothing but it is a, a virtual queue or people that, uh, a business view or a semantic layer. So the first uh, involves using uh, Pentaho's uh, design tool which is called Schema Workbench. Again, this is a tool that gets installed on a, a developer or an IT specialist uh, workstation. Going into that, direct was installed, going into the workbench, and it uh, with the schema workbench in my Windows environment. So we have for a schema workbench. The first thing I'll do is I'll set up my connection. Go options, connect, specific connection. So you can see that. Uh, Different types are available. So, um, on databases, uh, Oracle, SQL Server, MySQL, and the committee is uh, using the JDBC driver. So, the sample to build today will be using uh, the hypersonic database, which is uh, available only using Pentaho. So, hypersonic that is defined, and out of uh, where is the driver located? So, workbench. Driver tree. So this is a location of uh, any uh, JDBC driver or any data source that you are connecting to. So in this case, I'm using uh, my hypersonic. So this is a location that I have uh, dropped my driver in. Make sure the connection is valid. Looks good. And the next we'll do is uh, we'll start creating. Also, is that uh, in my schema definition here, I have also defined uh, a database name. So this is a this, the definition is defined in Pentaho's Enterprise Console. I'm not going to go into detail here. There's different uh, videos and tutorials available on how to define the database connection. So you can see that this is a web interface. Database connection is defined using the drive for hypersonic and just provides the URL as well. Next step, going through the process of uh, creating the schema. Define the appropriate schema name. And then just call it, say, my test schema. Write schema. Start with the heading my cube. Name of the cube, I'll find as, say, my test cube. So as you can see here is today, I'm defining my schema, it's giving us some of cube name, and how easy and how, how come to find my cubes here. So right click here now and define, so the first thing I'm going to define is uh, defining my table. So what is my fact table? So pick a database that I have defined, I'm specifying my fact table. Well, click here, my orders fact table. A table define. Next thing we'll define our dimensions. So for this case, we will define for this dimension we'll define a total three dimensions. We'll define our uh, convention, we'll have our product dimension, and we will pick our time dimension. So quickly the first one we'll we will define as our customer. Hierarchy here. Yes, I only have one, so I'll just delete the other one. The default name. And is adding the table. So table is where is the uh, information coming from. So in this case, I'll pick, say, all tables. Pick up uh, the customers. That's 
Next, we will start with uh, creating different levels. Underneath the customer, we will have three different levels. The first level will start with, say, customer name, which causes in my table structure. This is defined in customer name. Other properties as a this is my straight type, level as regular, and just make it number. This is all being documented in the Pintao documentation as well as uh, on uh, another space. So defined, and go to the process for other two levels that I want for my customer here. We will make it as a as a frame. Here, defining a column, which is the first name. And say that's going through the string type and make it an hour. Both are defined. There is a red X next to my customer uh, dimension. So, what also it points out that foreign keys must be set. So, in my foreign area, I am defining my foreign key that is associated with this uh, particular customer. In which we'll find by say customer number. Yeah, quickly and easily how my first dimension is created. And the process for, for other two dimensions here. Next one we'll define as uh, our product dimension. Process. Next is hierarchy. Delete my second here, and we will make this again a default one. Define, same will pick off a, and in this case, go and say pick my products. Both here, my level will be defined as say, Product. We'll start as our column name. So in this case, I'll just say pick product line. This is going to be my string, and I can say regular. This is Next, one more level, which I'll make it say. Here, so in this case, I'll pick say product render, type string, and make it the regular. Done. Same process. It shows the red, red X. One keys must be set. In this case, code is my red. And now, oops. Oh, it didn't accept it. So product code. And now it's gone. You can easily, we have two dimensions defined. We have a customer as well as we have our product dimensions created. And then define is our time dimension. Let's say time. Define. Let's make it a default. That first one. At the first, in this case, I'll pick pointing by oops, time, the time, which is my dimension table. Pick my level. And our level will be starting very high level, which is my year. Column, pick your ID. Also, this is my said numeric level time. In this case, the time dimension. So we'll pick say time years and make it a never. Define. It says is invalid. Let's just find out. First thing it says is uh, the foreign keys must be set. And the 
pound key, all change that from the standard dimension to my time dimension. So this is based on time key that all the red axes have disappeared. Now. So starting level, I have a time dimension. Underneath that, my first uh, dimension is a, or first level is my year. Same. Next, I'll define one more level. I'll call this a. Oh, so before I do that, uh, I want I want to also create my annotation. So what annotations means is when you go into Analyzer, which is a web-based query and analysis, uh, doing annotations, especially for a time dimension, gives you much more uh, filtering capabilities, such as uh, you want to pick current year, previous year, and that. It's all being documented really well in knowledge base. So if you go into uh, kb.pintao.com, just search for annotation, and it gives you a very good description of how uh, to be followed in annotation. So quickly, take something from my notepad, just for making it convenient. So first, I'll define that as an analytic format. So for year, I will define as y, 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 y. Again, it's been documented really well. So my, my annotations for date is created. And same will continue for quarter. Defined. We'll pick the column. So I'll make quarter ID as my column. This is going to be numeric type as well. I'll define time quarter. And property of never. Same thing here as well in my quarter to, uh, quarter level. And I'll pick next. Here. That's defined. And quick also grab my format and make it available. Five dot and there's a Q for four. So you can have our three dimensions. We have our customer dimension, we have our product dimension, and we have time dimension along with multiple levels. I'll move that. I have one more red X here, so just contain measures. So next next problem is uh, defining our measures. So let's just define the first is. We'll make the sum. We'll pick quantity from the list, quantity ordered, and I'm adding it at this time. And we'll make this as a numeric. Measure, so my first measure is defined now. Next, we'll create one more measure, which is sales. Finding my aggregation here, I'll pick sum. In this case, find sum as pound, my dollar, pound, comma, one, two, three. The data will be numeric, or I can take integer here. The column B. Total price. Full of uh, measures have been created my quantity and sales. Also, let's go through process of creating my calculated measure. So this is, in this case, we'll just call it, say, profit. But, uh, with our calculation, so sales times quantity as my profit. So in this case, the formula, see there, we'll, de we'll define. Formula and you're ready to go. So quick three different measures along with our calculated measures. Next up, publishing this. I want to save schema. I'll save this into a, a local directory here. This define as a hyperlink. 
I'll replace your So I'm going to publish it. So publishing is uh, defining the location of my Pentaho BI server. I want to publish this thing in. So in this case, being a specific where I want to my cube creating it. So push. I, I publish successful. Quick. And the next step is going into my user console. Closing that. And then repository. So multiple tasks that will go into tools. Refresh. Go into repository cache, and I will also refresh monitoring schema cache. So this is user console, which is a web-based interface for the users to log in, view existing content, as well as create new content. You see that now. Go into my services, and you can see my test schema on the queue that we had created. It's available in the list. We can we have our customer name, first name, profit. That's available. We can start doing creating my ad hoc report with the uh, drag and drop here. Full indication of the power benefit and the value of uh, how to create the virtual key for the cubes using a Penta, Pentaho schema workbench tool. Thank you and um, look forward. Um, if you have more questions, just uh, give us a call. We look forward to working with you.